Hey everybody, on the other end of this big series of tubes we call the internet, uh, it's me, Brandon Hart, and uh, I am here to uh, talk about something I've been doing lately. I've been doing some experiments, and um, uh, these were inspired by some stuff I saw from Shory Designs, uh, where basically he was uh, printing, you know, doing some 3D printing on various different fabrics and materials. Um, pretty cool stuff, and uh, I just I wanted to try it out myself and see what I could do with it. So um, basically, just went to the local Ace Hardware store and uh, bought myself some screen fabric. This is nothing special, just standard screen material. Uh, cut it into chunks the size of my print bed, and started using some of the uh, some of the files and patterns and stuff that I found on the internet, on Thingiverse mostly. And um, so we've got some, some pretty cool ones. Some worked better than others, uh, but here is one that uh, is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's like some, some spikes and stuff. You can see turning this into like a, uh, you know, goth or, or, you know, whatever, some sort of gauntlet would be cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just really cool stuff for the, cosplay community and, and wearables and, and stuff like that. Um, but obviously didn't stop with one. So uh, I got some input from my kids um, and uh, you know, they have preferences on colors and patterns and things like that. This is actually one of the first ones I did. I really like this one. This is scales and uh, I'll put links to all of these different designs. The ones that are on Thingiverse, I'll put them up. Uh, some of these are mine. But, uh, you know, again, cosplay and stuff, I think just kind of the best way to show this stuff off is, is to show the, the inherent flexibility of it. And uh, it's just really cool stuff. So basically, let me just throw a few of these out here. Uh, so there are the scales. Um, here's a hexagon pattern. It's got some real good flexibility on that one. Um, Got some green octagons. The octagons are cool because they get the little squares between them to kind of fill that open space. So I like that one as well. This one is nice because it actually has flexibility in lots of different directions, even sort of uh, diagonally. You'll notice some of these bend, you know, real well one way or diagonally, but not so much the other ways. So. That's kind of interesting how you can change the way things bend. You know, here's another one again, because of the way they're lined up, they don't really want to bend that way. But if you bend them diagonally, no problem. Good with that. So pretty cool. Again, there's the octagons. Uh, these are the same scales that I did the first time in black. Here I changed it up and I did them in yellow and uh, scaled them up a little bit. And that exact, that, that uh, effect that you get, whoops, the effect you get where you can't really bend it in one way as much is much greater when you scale up the individual patterns themselves. So again, this really doesn't want to bend this way. Uh, and I imagine it yeah, a little bit better this way, but not still not great. But if you go on the diagonal lines, it bends just fine. It's really kind of interesting. And um, so I thought, uh, you know, my daughter wanted to print something pink. So I thought, well, if we're gonna print something pink, <laughs> we'll do it in Polyalchemy Elixir. Um, and uh, and uh, why not make it hearts? So I actually designed this pattern in Fusion 360 and threw it together. And, you know, again, we've got some really nice flexibility because of the way these hearts line up. Um, so, that could actually be kind of cool. I, you know, maybe uh, make some custom clothing or, or something like that, that that she could wear around if she wanted to. Um, the other nice thing about these, because of the way that they are printed, and let me explain that real fast. Uh, the way that they're printed is you actually print one layer, this bottom layer first, before there's any screen or anything like that. Just put that, that, that bottom layer gets printed down on the bed. And then once that bottom layer is printed, you do have to edit the G code, enter M25 G code right before it moves to layer two. So that way it'll move over and it'll pause. 
and then you put the screen down on top of that first layer that was printed, clip it in place and hit resume on the machine. And then it'll go back to where it left off and continue to print. That second layer, the one, the first one after you put the screen down, doesn't really build up much. It's actually just kind of filling in the holes in the screen. So you get a really, really good bonded part on the screen itself. It, it's, it's not something that's gonna peel up or peel off. The plastic is bonded all the way through the mesh to itself. So that's gonna be nice and strong. Again, should survive plenty of abuse and, and you know cosplay, uh, posing, and all sorts of fun stuff like that. But printing on squares is cool and everything, but can we do something more functional with it? So then I jumped into Fusion 360 and I designed this little guy. Uh, it's not a cross. Um, this is actually a box form. And so this box was printed again the same exact way. Printed that first layer, put down a screen, and then printed the rest of this. And uh, printed it in such a way, and designed it in such a way that there was a 45 degree, actually 46 just to give a little slop. Um, uh, bevel in between each one of these and I did a 0.2 millimeter spacing between them which I think was a bit more than it needed to be but uh, wanted to give some tolerance there for the machine it's pretty cool but you know it just sort of falls apart so um, that could be useful but I think we can do better <laughs> and so I went back and uh, made it a, a little bit thicker Actually, I had to do some math with the Pythagorean theorem. Thank you, high school math. Um, so that I could determine, based upon the size of the magnets, the diameter of the magnets, how high would my extrusions be if I wanted a 46 degree angle on the faces of each one of these. I changed the difference between each of the squares down to 0.15 millimeters. Not a big difference, but it is a little bit tighter. So that's nice. And uh, obviously with those magnets in there, I didn't put them all in because I didn't think they were all necessary, but with those magnets in there, now it holds itself together real nicely. Um, the only issue now is <laughs> once it's closed up, all the seams look exactly the same, which is great, except they have no idea which part opens. <laughs> so uh, you just sort of have to make some random guesses so far i haven't gotten it right here i really don't oh, there we go <laughs> so uh so it's pretty cool so yeah i can print a whole box just flat down like this and it just pops together and holds itself that way so i really think this is cool i think there are a lot of potential applications for something like this in functional designs and functional parts um, you know we in the 3d printing community a lot of times are trying to figure out how to combine rigid parts um, and maybe some flexible materials to make living hinges or you know use nylon which could bend and give you that living hinge capability but just print it on a screen and you've essentially got your hinge built in um, so you know that's pretty cool stuff so anyway wanted to share that with you I thought it was fun I thought it was cool I haven't seen anybody do that yet out there um, if you know of somebody who's done something like this post it down in the comments I'd love to check it out and maybe we'll do more experimentation with this kind of stuff in the future. That would be cool. But anyway, um, just wanted to share that with you real quick. This is Brandon Hart, the Eco Struder. Please do all the YouTube -y things like liking and subscribing. Um, I do have more videos coming. I've got the first two videos of the Big 60 3D printer build. I'm looking over here because that's where the half finished machine is. Um, so I did an unboxing and the first part of the assembly. Uh, the replacement parts just arrived for the parts that were, were uh, an issue from the first machine. So I'm going to unbox those and keep going with the rest of the assembly. So I will get back to that. If you've been looking for that, uh, I will get back to that. There will be a part three coming very, very shortly. I think that will do it. Again, like, subscribe, comment, all the fun stuff. And until next time, I will see you later. Please enjoy 3d printing and have fun but be eco-conscious about it i don't know i'm trying to do all right thank you bye <laughs>